whole info processing this is Anton, and, well, there's a dinosaur behind me, I think. And that's because today we're going to be talking about some of the new discoveries about the asteroid that ended their reign on the planet. And more specifically, a completely new asteroid, the one that we never knew about. Because very recently, and actually just a few days ago, the scientists have identified a completely new crater nobody knew existed. A crater that was created around the same time as the one that ended the reign of dinosaurs. And a pretty big crater, approximately 10 kilometers across. And if you're asking yourself why is it that nobody has ever seen it before, well it's because it's actually in the ocean. Located somewhere right here in the Atlantic between South America and Africa. And so let's actually talk a little bit more about this, including some of the other details and other discoveries from the last few years that help us understand what exactly happened 66 million years ago in order to transform the planet so much that the dinosaurs more or less disappeared and mammals, like you and me, became the dominant species. But first, a quick side note. This is not the first time we discover an additional crater from the same period of time. As a matter of fact, approximately a year ago from when I'm making this video, we've actually discussed the previous discovery of the Boltish impact structure located somewhere in Ukraine that had all of the additional signs that very likely hit planet Earth a few thousand years after the initial impact in Mexico. And although the Chicxulub crater was obviously the biggest and the most powerful impactor, it looks like there were additional impactors afterwards that, as some of the scientists speculated, essentially added to the total release of various gases on the planet, serving as an additional source of various emissions, which added to the survival difficulty of various dinosaurs and kind of sealed their fate. With the speculation here being that if it wasn't for these additional impacts, there might have actually been a chance that some of the dinosaurs, or actually a lot more dinosaurs, would have survived the initial impact. But because several events happened at once, including the volcanic eruption in India, all of these emissions changed the climate on the planet way too much, resulting in an extinction of several species all at once. And one of the ways that all of these impacts influence the planet is actually by suddenly releasing huge amounts of sediments, which basically released huge amounts of CO2, along with other gases on the surface of the planet, which basically transformed the oceans, acidifying them almost instantly, and also transformed the atmosphere, making the climate way too different compared to what it was before. I've actually discussed this in many other videos, and you can find some of them in the description below. And one of the other recent videos from just a few months ago also mentions an incredible discovery of what appears to be oceanic ripples from massive tsunami waves created around 66 million years ago with the origin of these waves being the massive crater in Mexico. The video about this is also in the description below. And so in the last few years we've actually learned quite a lot about that one day when all of the dinosaurs sort of perished, or I guess most of the dinosaurs. There is of course the speculation that certain birds evolved from dinosaurs, but genetically speaking birds are extremely different from dinosaurs, and I guess that idea deserves its own video. And so we've learned so much in just the last few years. There's even at least one study that claims to have discovered potential DNA of an ancient dinosaur, something that would actually be quite groundbreaking. And now we have a new discovery, a discovery coming from the ocean. And as you probably know already, we actually know so much less about the ocean than we do about other planets. As a matter of fact, we have better maps of Mars and the Moon than the Earth's ocean. But in the last few years, the scientists have been actively trying to map all of the ocean and have actually been creating incredible new maps by using new technologies. Although in this case the technique itself is pretty old, but the way that it's used is completely new. So this is known as the reflection seismology, something that was actually used back in the early 1900s. And the idea is to create some kind of a vibration or some kind of a shock that will then create waves which can then be detected and measured from elsewhere. So in a sense it kind of works like a sonar, except that in this case the sonar or the waves go through the earth itself and through the crust with this right here being one example of the data that it produces. But naturally now we have so many new techniques and actually really interesting techniques. For example, these machines right here are able to produce the vibration by hitting the ground in just a specific way, which then allows the scientists to create these very beautiful three-dimensional maps of what happens underneath. But in order to do this in the ocean, the scientists use something a little bit different. They use a high-pressure air bubble that shoots into the water every 15 to 20 seconds, and so it acts as a kind of an air gun that releases these very high pressure bubbles at very regular intervals. And so by conducting this technique right here around the west coast of Africa, the scientists identified telltale signs of an ancient crater, although in this case covered by huge amounts of sediment 
mostly because this happened 66 million years ago. And actually, that's exactly how the scientists know the age, because of the amount of sediment. Although, I guess a quick side note, it's still an estimate, so in order to establish the exact date, the scientists would have to get one of the samples. This cannot be done just yet, you would have to drill through all of this in order to collect at least one of the samples. But the signs were all there. All of the rims, all of the peaks, everything that we expect from a typical crater created by an asteroid was all visible in this case as well. And so they named this the Nadir Crater, named after the nearby volcano known as Nadir Seamount. And if you actually wanted to find out where it is on, for example, Google Maps, you can grab these coordinates right here from Wikipedia, and then by putting them into the Google Earth or Google Maps, you'll discover the approximate location. So it's somewhere right here. And it's supposed to be about 10 kilometers in size, so it's maybe about this big. Although, as you can see here, we don't really have the very accurate maps of this region. So it might be actually somewhere here, but it's naturally very difficult to see because the maps here still lack any detail and these areas have barely been explored. And so it's somewhere right here, very close to Guinea. And if this impact is confirmed by other studies, it would make it an extremely interesting discovery, because this is one of the few marine impact craters that would be officially confirmed and are known to exist. Although based on the current data and current observations, it almost certainly is one. But I guess the next question is, what exactly caused this, and where did it come from? Well, in terms of what caused this, the scientists can work this out, mostly based on the modeling from a lot of other similar events and from a lot of computer simulations. In this case, it's believed that this asteroid was approximately 400 meters in diameter and hit the water at approximately 20 kilometers per second. And because the ocean here is not super deep, it would very likely go through the water column and strike the upper crust of the planet as well. And so all of this would result in, first of all, a huge water column, or basically kind of like a tsunami, that's at least 800 meters in height, but also a huge amount of water simply evaporated almost instantly. And when it hit the ocean floor, it would also create a very powerful earthquake, very likely 7 in magnitude, which potentially then creates tsunamis and even landslides, resulting in even more destruction around the area. There would also be a huge air blast and a huge explosion with one of the loudest sounds ever, with the overall energy release being approximately 1000 times larger than the eruption of Tonga that happened in 2022. At least that's what the scientists were able to simulate using relatively accurate models, and the actual results look extremely similar to what they found underneath. And interestingly enough, in terms of the size and in terms of the profile, this asteroid is not so different from the asteroid Bennu that NASA recently collected the samples from. As a matter of fact, Bennu right now is one of the more dangerous asteroids out there in terms of the potential collision with planet Earth. And we believe that collisions with very similar asteroids, approximately 400 meters across, very likely happen at least every 100,000 years, with at least a few similar sized craters already identified in the last few years. But the other question is, is this particular asteroid related to that crater from Mexico, related to the bigger one? And is this somehow also related to the crater from Ukraine? Since the age of these asteroids is relatively similar, within about 1 million years, the implication is definitely there. Were these asteroids just part of a larger family that essentially collided with our planet over a period of 1 million years, eventually resulting in the demise of a lot of life on the planet? Well, right now the scientists believe there are three possible explanations. The first explanation is that maybe they did have some kind of a parent asteroid that broke up, creating several fragments, with all these fragments then coming to the planet and eventually resulting in several collisions with three detected so far. Which would also mean that the extinction event itself did not just happen because of that one collision, but it happened because of a series of events that unfortunately happened around the same time. Several collisions, plus the volcanic eruption in India. You can learn more about all of this in some of the videos in the description. We've actually observed something similar, but on a smaller scale, happening on Jupiter back in the 90s. The Shoemaker-Levi 9 comet that broke apart and hit Jupiter in several locations could be a potential model for what happened here on Earth. And the signs of the collision here were actually visible for quite a long time afterwards. You can see them in these pictures. But in this case, the comet fell apart because of the tidal forces, not really because of a collision, and it's kind of unlikely that this would happen around planet Earth, mostly because our planet is just not massive enough to create such tidal effects for comets or asteroids coming from distant locations. But this could have been actually created by a collision with a larger asteroid somewhere in the asteroid belt that essentially created a bunch of pieces that then ended up coming closer to planet Earth. And if so, 
chances are there might be more pieces somewhere out there, or actually there could have been more pieces colliding with other objects, including the moon or possibly even planets like Mercury, and we should be able to find some of the craters around the same time by looking at surfaces of these objects, although at the moment it's actually a little bit difficult for the scientists to identify the exact period when some of these craters were made. All of this is still based on statistical analysis, and a lot of it is based on estimates. And then there's, of course, the more likely explanation is that, well, collisions like this, as I mentioned before, do happen quite regularly. But because our planet is so good at covering up the craters, especially if they're in the ocean, it's just very difficult for us to find signs of them afterwards. The frequency for these collisions is anywhere from 100,000 to 700,000 years, which means that since then, there might actually have been at least 70 more, or even as much as 700 more, but we just don't really see the craters. Although there were two craters discovered in Greenland just a few years ago, which do have very similar size and very similar profiles. And so these craters do definitely exist. This one here, for example, is just a little bit larger and very likely happened within the last 30 million years. But right now there's only one way to test all of this. First of all, the scientists would have to find a way to drill through this and to actually physically recover some of the samples in order to analyze their age and in order to see if there are telltale signs of an asteroid collision, such as for example enrichment in certain elements that could not have come from anywhere else. And if confirmed, it once again serves as a very important reminder that these events are not as rare as we think they are. And it's also a reminder that we still have no technology or no known techniques in trying to prevent any of these events from happening in the future. Although there's at least one mission that's going to be testing all of this in the next few weeks, the DART mission, and we'll actually be talking about this and the outcomes in the video that's going to be coming out when the mission is complete. And so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss this video. And on that note, well it looks like there's another asteroid that hit planet Earth and might have actually added to the misery the dinosaurs were going through. Although the chances are by the time that it hit planet Earth, most of them might have already been gone. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Once we learn more about this, I'll follow this up with another video. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.